it is history time. I feel like it's been so long, but it's because we had the days of review and then you had the test yesterday. So finally we're back like learning about these different people throughout history. And today we're on page 422, chapter 43, page 422, chapter 43. And we're going to learn about John Glenn and Neil Armstrong. So John Glenn was born in 1921 and he died in 2016. And Neil Armstrong was born in 1930 and he died in 2012. So these are men that have lived to the 2000s. So in the time that we are familiar with in 2016, you guys were alive when John Glenn was still alive. And so it's just an interesting thing that we think now we're kind of able to almost touch that history in a sense. And it's kind of exciting to think about. So page 423, look at the important words and names at the bottom of the page. Astronaut. So if you weren't sure who these men were and you didn't recognize their names, now you're going to have an idea. An astronaut is a person who is trained to travel and work in space. Then important names, John Glenn, he was the first American to orbit the Earth, U.S. Senator, and he also was the oldest man in space. We'll find out about that. Neil Armstrong is the first astronaut to step on the moon. So John Glenn orbited the Earth, and he was the oldest man in space, as well as being a U.S. Senator, but Neil Armstrong, he's the one that actually took the first step onto the moon. And then Alan Shepard is the first American in space. Two small boys, many miles apart, discovered their love of flying when their fathers took them for their first airplane rides. Most young boys back in, in Neil Armstrong and John Glenn's time, they were just dying to be pilots. This it was the coolest thing to them because remember, like planes were still just becoming popular and still fairly new. And it was a big deal. And as more and more people are doing it and they see, you know, Amelia Earhart's and all, you know, Charles Lindbergh's, they're like, this is, I want to be a pilot. This is the best thing ever. Well, both of these boys had dads that took them for their first airplane rides. John Glenn was just eight years old when that happened. And Neil Armstrong was only five when it all began. These boys had no idea that they would grow up to become pilots as well as pioneers of space. While you're young, just to say, it is so great. You may not know right now, you know, exactly what you want to be when you get older. And you don't need to know. That's not important. But it is special and important to be able to take something that you're interested in and read and learn about it as much as you can so that maybe it will help you in your job someday when you get older. You never know. Now, I have to say, and I think I've told you this before, if you haven't heard it in the classroom, I think I've told it in chapel a few times. Maybe you don't remember. But in third grade, I knew what I wanted to be. Yeah, you think, right? You'd think it's be, she wanted to be a teacher. No, I didn't. I wanted to be a cashier at a grocery store or a secretary because I love to push buttons. Love, love pushing buttons. I love like the click, click, click of buttons. When I was younger, it wasn't um, cashiering with the beep, beep, beep. It was cashiering with you had to plug in the numbers and push these buttons and uh, and then there's there's cash machines. I would go into a store like Staples and I would walk through Staples and just push all the, the buttons like, you know, and pretend like I'm doing it fast. And, you know, um, with the computer um, um, keyboard and all, I just love to push buttons. They took a lot of buttons away from me by having all the stuff with the lasers and the scanning and all that. But every once in a while, I get a good feel and a fix for my pushing of buttons. It wasn't until fourth grade, though, that I thought I loved my fourth grade teacher, which I know you will next year, too. <laughs> I'm going to lose you to her, but it's okay. Um, but I loved my fourth grade teacher. And because of that, I wanted to become a teacher. And so since fourth grade age, I was teaching my stuffed animals and doing different things to, you know, and it, here I am today, YouTube teacher. No, not really, but teaching my wonderful third graders. So 
You never know. And so learn as much as you can now because you never know where it will take you as you get older. John Glenn, let's find out about him growing up. Red, white, and blue flags line the streets and storefronts in a small town in Ohio. As the marching bands played in the parade, John Glenn Jr.'s heart swelled with pride. He loved the flag. He loved his country and wondered what he could do to serve the United States. He could not have imagined that the world would soon watch as he soared into space. Not once, but twice. As a young child, John loved building model airplanes. What did he love doing? Building model airplanes. He loved doing that. He found jobs washing cars, and he sold vegetables to earn extra money so that he could buy his own bicycle. He delivered newspapers in his neighborhood. John had big dreams that included flying. While John was in college, he learned about a program that would allow him to take flying lessons for free. What? That's awesome. He quickly enrolled in this class and learned to fly. On December 7th, 1941 as john listened to the radio they didn't have tvs um back then as or if they did it was very few but he listened to the radio and he heard about the bombing of pearl harbor navy base in hawaii it was not a good day because there were many soldiers and people that had been killed because of that bombing so he enlisted and served his country in the U.S. Navy as a pilot during World War II. Next, Mr. Glenn served in the Korean War. He flew a total of 149 combat missions and received many awards for his faithful service to his country. So what were the two wars that he fought in? World War II and the Korean War. By the way, my uncle that I talk about every, I don't know if, I, if you've heard me talk about him, but I talk about him every once in a while. He served in the Korean War as well. He always wears his little Korean War veteran hat. Um, in 1943, John Glenn married his childhood sweetheart, Annie Castor. She supported him in his desire to fly and encouraged him to keep doing what he loved. He left the military, but he still loved flying. He became a test pilot and eventually set the speed record for the fastest flight across the continental United States. The special plane flew at 725 miles per hour. Remember with Amelia Earhart, I think her speed was what, 180? And that was the fastest. He's going 725 miles per hour. The flight took only three hours, 23 minutes and eight seconds. That was just this ridiculous, crazy speed for that time. Um, here's a bonus fact. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, the USS Arizona battleship was bombed. The ship was damaged so badly that it sank. Over 1,000 men on board died. The USS Arizona Memorial was built over the spot where the sunken ship lies in the harbor. Um, and so um, I believe if you look I, maybe in the back of your book on the landmarks, there's um, the USS Arizona Memorial, and you can see where it's built over where that sip, ship is in the the ocean still. It's sunk, you know, down there, and they built that as a remembrance. Um, look at important places before we talk about astronaut. Houston, Texas is the home of NASA. Oh, yeah, we recognize NASA. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, started by Dwight Eisenhower, yes. Cape Canaveral, Florida, that's the place where rockets and spacecraft are launched. And I remember that because as a young girl, we used to watch the space shuttles launch all the time. We would be in school and we would hear, oh, there's a launch today. And we would, you know, leave our classrooms, walk down to the assembly and watch it on TV or whatever. So Cape Canaveral is where they would launch those spacecraft and rockets. Astronaut. John Glenn was one of seven men chosen by NASA to be the first astronauts. These men trained hard. Mr. Glenn was disappointed when he was not chosen at the first to be the first or even the second man in space. 
he was finally chosen for the third Mercury mission. John Glenn would be the first American to orbit the Earth. On February 20th, 1962, Friendship 7 launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida and soared into the sky. Soon, Mr. Glenn was in orbit. What a sight. He orbited the Earth three times, the Earth three times in about five hours. During this trip, he was able to see three sunrises and sunsets from space. How cool is that? But Friendship 7 began to have problems. The heat shield on his spacecraft looked as if it might fail. This could cause the spacecraft to catch on fire when it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere because it comes in and it's a different atmosphere and, and it could catch fire. Mission Control wasted no time in getting Mr. Glenn back to Earth. Flames covered the space capsule as it sped through the air, but the heat shield did not fail. The capsule landed safely in the ocean and was soon back on land. During his mission, John Glenn spent only a few hours in space, but it had been a success. John Glenn became an American hero. Even President John F. Kennedy visited him. Many parades were held in Mr. Glenn's honor. People waited for hours to see the first man who had orbited the Earth. John Glenn hoped to return to space, but President Kennedy wanted to keep this new American hero safe. He would not travel back to space, at least not yet. Politics. After his space fight, flight, Mr. Glenn began looking for another way to serve his country. He wasn't going to be allowed to go back up in space. The president wanted to keep him safe. So politics became his next career. Mr. Glenn was elected to represent Ohio as a U.S. Senator and held that office for 25 years. 25 years he was a Senator in Ohio. One more trip to space. Oh, so he goes to space and he gets all these, you know, accolades because he's done so well and parades and all these honors. But the president's like, no, I don't want you going back up into space. And he's like, well, fine. I'll find something else to do to serve my country, becomes a senator for 25 years, and now there's one more trip? What? Senator Glenn never gave up on his dream to go back to space. When he was 77 years old, he heard about a study NASA wanted to do on aging in space. This could be his chance to return to space again. He applied for the job and was selected. He would have to do the training any astronaut would do, but he was not a young man anymore. Could he do it? Yes. He completed his training and was ready to be an astronaut one more time at 77 years old. On October 28, 1998, John Glenn returned to space aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. This mission sent six men and one woman to do medical research. The crew spent nine days in space and orbited the Earth 134 times, traveling over 3 million miles. As part of this crew, John Glenn became the oldest person to travel in space. John Glenn spent his life serving his country as a true patriot. In 2011, Mr. Glenn, along with the three astronauts of Apollo 11, was presented a Congressional Gold Medal for his service as an astronaut in the space program. While looking out the window of the space shuttle, Mr. Glenn said, to look out at this kind of creation out here and not believe in God is to me impossible. It just strengthens my faith. I wish there were words to describe what it's like. Isn't that a beautiful thing for somebody to think and say? So. Do we think that Mr. Glenn believed in God? Yes. He says, how could anybody look out here and look at, from the space shuttle and, and not be able to believe that there's somebody, a, somebody important, God, that made all of this? So he was a believer in God. So look at Psalm 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And that's basically what John Glenn was saying. It shows in all the wonderful creation that we see, it shows that there was a handy maker, uh, a person that created, and that was God. 
So comprehension check, you're going to work on that on the bottom of page 427. We'll go over it tomorrow, but work carefully to review those questions, true or false, and read them carefully. Um, hope that you've enjoyed reading about John Glenn. We're going to talk about Neil Armstrong tomorrow, and we'll find out about his life and what are some of the things that he loved. We'll see, you know, some of the similarities, maybe in differences of these men. So hope you're ex excited as I am. It should be fun to do. All right, we will let you go for now, and I will see you in the next video. See you, bye.